So, who here owns a drone? Five. Five people. That's still enough. So, unmanned aircraft systems, drones, are becoming more and more prevalent in geoscience research. We even, I just came from a town hall that's trying to create a UAV drone network and community within AGU. And at university in Fairbanks, we are an FAA test site. So we are doing both small and large unmanned aircraft systems. So we are looking at ways to improve the FAA and help the FAA on safe integration of aircraft into the manned airspace. So what you see here on the left is us working with a startup company from California to fly their uh, electric hybrid system in Alaska along the pipeline. So we're doing a four mile flight beyond the line of sight of the uh, pilot. So that allows us to expand potentially to the whole state, potentially flying all the way from the west coast to the east coast long into the future. So here we're flying without the need of a grand observer. So if anybody here flies an unmanned aircraft system now, you need to be able to keep the aircraft in line of sight. We're flying with onboard systems to fly without needing to keep eyes on the aircraft, both onboard and below on, and on the ground. On the right hand side is the large. Most of you probably have not flown one of these. This is a fixed wing aircraft which is 300 pounds in weight and can take up to 50 pounds of sensor equipment, can fly up to eight hours. So now we're talking about the ability to map the Arctic. You saw Alex talking about NOAA needing Arctic data. You've now got a tool that can map that data set. And we're flying this with Transport Canada in uh, the Gas Bay area of the, uh, of the Canadian uh, lakes. And we're flying for uh, whale mapping in ocean uh, routes. So the Canadian uh, oceanographic uh, community wants to know where whales are to be able to reduce the impact on ocean-going transportation. So therefore, they're wanting to use drones or unmanned systems to help the ocean captains know when they should slow down their ships because there's whales or any form of mammal in the area. So the image on the left is a whale detected in a footprint image the image on the right is what a ship looks like in the same image. And you can see the size of the whale compared to the ship is quite small. But they have to shut down that shipping lane if there's any mammals in the area. And that means every single shipping lane as of now. Not just the shipping lane the ship is in, but every shipping lane which significantly impacts transportation of, of any goods in Canada. So what they want to be able to do is say, shut down shipping lane one because there's a map there's a whale in the way but keep shipping lanes three four and five open because it's not going to be impacting those ships coming through so the ability to shut off ocean transportation routes rather than shutting off the whole ocean going route and that's also going to be critical in alaska and the arctic as the increased use of the bering sea the bering straits transportation from asia into the united states North, North, the um, northern uh, Arctic oceans are going to be growing and growing and growing and we have wildlife and mammals in that area and we need to be able to navigate safely around them so why not use unmanned systems to help reduce the impact on their habitats but continued expanse and growth in the economy of the north so that's me I had my minute finger from Fritz so I've been told I am nearly done so thank you, and any questions for me? Uh, okay, so I can try and see if I can over-trump um, uh, NASA over there. I, th I think probably as oper for everybody that's an operator, make sure you use the FAAs before you fly, before taking off because you may be in restricted airspace and not know it. And if that's the case, you're breaking the rules, so you shouldn't even be flying. So BFU, before you fly app, I'll tell you if you can even take off. Sorry. A safety minute.